So this is my first review of the year, and it is DBA 3.0. Um, if you don't know what DBA is, uh, Debellus Antiquitatis, um, it's a historical rule set um, designed for scales between 6mm uh, or probably 2mm and 28mm. Um, it's played on a small area and um, the age it covers, I think it's about 3000 BC up to about 1500 AD. So it's a really good coverage um, if you like your history. So let's have a quick look at the book. Um, I've got some of the older editions of the book. Uh, it's all where they're all black and white, A5, softback. <laughs> I mean, this this game's been out probably before I was born. But now it's hardback and it's uh, A4 size. Um, it cost me about 20 quid, uh, uh, 20 pounds, which is a, a bargain for what you get in here. Um, even though it's not the greatest laid out book that uh, you'll see. Uh, it's not colour inside. Once you get inside it is back to the old school uh, black and white with uh, pages of uh, information <laughs> and writing. Um, nothing really breaking it up but it's just so full of information um, to play such a quick and easy game and covering such a large period without it feeling um, um, too generic that it kind of breaks it. Uh, that The way the armies are made in this e each army kind of has its own feel to it okay so as you can see here this is pretty much how the book's laid out with a lot of writing uh, there is a section you'll see in a minute uh, where it just goes through different uh, situations that can occur but basically the game is based on what they call 12 elements and an element is a base of models uh, the size of the base and how many models are on it dictates its type and there are, well, I don't know, about a dozen different types in the book, uh, covering things from a blade, which would represent like Romans or the samurai, some solid foot uh, that can hold itself and also drive back the enemy. Uh, obvious ones like spear, which represent uh, both offensive and defensive spearmen, uh, like Saxon feared or the Greek hoplites. Um, elephant, which is self-explanatory. Siloi, which are your skirmishers. Um, light horse, cavalry, knight, chariot, I mean it covers pretty much everything you need in here and these bases as I say depending on their size, depending on how many models on them uh, detects what they are and how they work in the game. Uh, the game is rolled for, controlled by pips so each player rolls d6 at the beginning of their turn and this is how many actions you can take so to speak so each unit can be moved once um, for an action uh, how how a single element moves is relatively freely as long as no part of it moves more than its max move you can move it around uh, you can group move elements that are in base contact which is front corner contact I believe and side contact um, they count as a group and they can be all moved at once um, I'm gonna do a special um, getting started with uh, series and I'm gonna actually do DVA it's just so you can see what I kind of buy how much it kind of costs to get in and also so you can see some of the gameplay as well so here you can see some of the diagrams in here that show situations and how elements react or line up to each other and how they move um, it's very important because one thing with Phil Barker I mean there's 12 pages of rules that's all you need to get started that explains how the elements work, uh, how combat works, movement works, uh, but his way of writing can be a bit hard to understand. And these diagrams, which I think is about six pages or so, just at different situations, maybe a few more, explain to you how it works far clearer and far easier. Plus a couple of games yourself, you'll soon pick it up. Um, I mean, this game is, there's tournaments for this. Um, they're not so well advertised as some other ones, but if you uh, in, enjoy your historical games. Try out the Society of Ancients. Um, I know they, uh, and I think DBA is run, tournaments are run via them. Um, I, Portsmouth and Allied War Games, I think they're called, they run about four events in the south of England uh, a year. Um, they have the summer, winter, you know, autumn one they run each year and each one has a different theme. Um, themes are taken out for the army lists of here. Um, so I've just quickly said, uh, combat, I've, I've explained how uh, control works, so you pip, so you have a d6, so it's pretty random what you can do, so you can group things up to, to increase your chance of being able to move your army. Combats are worked out by a tactical factor of each element, so an element of blade would have a t tactical factor of 5 against other infantry, while 3 against cavalry. Um, both players roll up the dice, adding their tactical factor. 
Uh, generally speaking, if you double your opponent's score, you wipe them out. Um, other than that, you'll push them back or... I mean, there's some things that quick kill and... But it's all how this game plays. The rules, I say, rules are simple. Once you head around them. And the, uh, the actual gameplay itself is the tactical part and the challenge. So as you can see here, there's just a list of one of the pages of the armies. And you can see how varied they are. I mean, half the armies in this book I've never even heard of. <laughs> the, these guys have done their research beyond belief. And not only that, I'll show you in the next page, but they've actually got a description of what these armies are and where they are. Because there's some I, I would never know. Um, like the early Afghanistan armies and stuff like that. It's just out of this world how much research has gone into this book. And as I say, for 20 quid the army list in this book it's just incredible so yeah you're looking from the egyptian period right up to like the hundred years war and beyond so 1500s early renaissance really and uh, yeah each of these army lists show a breakup of 12 elements which make up each army uh, so you, you're stuck with what's there does this mean the armies are fairly balanced to each other no, no it doesn't. Uh, these are historical armies uh, and the army represents how this army is best portrayed. I mean some of these armies are nearly entirely made up of skirmishers but that was how they fought, you know. There's nothing, um, no overly huge disadvantage in some cases but you have to learn to fight with an army of skirmishers. Uh, basically defenders sets up terrain so you'll be sending up a lot of terrain uh, while the form units will struggle to fight in the terrain, you'll get the advantage. Obviously, skirmishes are harder to catch. They're, they rely on the enemy's cavalry to chase them down or being trapped in uh, certain combats. Okay, and just to have a look here, I thought I'd take a photograph of um, a basic army that you'd probably know. Uh, so I've gone for the early Crusaders. And you can see a nice bit of background there, just telling you a bit about it. What would be in the army, how they fought. Um, historical things of interest. If you look below that you've got the um, Gurid, which I've never even heard of and this, <laughs> you know, place in Afghanistan and uh, you know, th this this is the kind of information I needed. In, in the original books it just had the army list, had none of this background information and so half of it I didn't know what it was. I had to like, search on wiki and find out where these places even were. But this, this is what makes this book so much better than its previous ones. They have just, it's gone from good to brilliant in my opinion just with this little bit of background information on it um, so if we just have a look at this early crusader one you can see your general is made up of a three knight so that's three uh, three models on on a base because um, there are different types of knight uh, you could have four knight and each of them affect differently so you've got three models on a base and you can look up earlier on where your knight size bases are and all of this kind of thing so you have one general uh, such as a knight three knights Four spearmen, which can be taken as spear or horde, uh, two crossbowmen, uh, one archers, and one pilgrims. So you get your choices between that. So you could have your four spearmen as either spear or horde. Um, actually, it's not many. <laughs> it's not one. Oh, there you go. And the last one, you can either have pilgrims or some light horse. So you pick out of those, and you'll end up with 12 elements. And this is your army. On top of that, you'll also want your camp as well. Uh, this will also be protected by camp followers, uh, which are important to put in there. And as you can see down at the bottom, you've got the terrain type, which is arable. This gives you your type of terrain if you come under attack. Um, you arable, I think your basic terrain type would be plow, representing fields and open areas. And also down the bottom, you've got enemies and allies um, to this army, just so you know what was available at the time to fight against. I mean, it's just a brilliant set of rules. I mean, it's hard for me to describe how good these rules are for something that's so basic. Um, I mean, there's a lot of rules at the moment that have a basic uh, build and everything's piled onto them. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I feel this one, it really, truly does. So here's a look at my Numidian army that we had uh, over Christmas, we had a little campaign. Uh, so I put together my Numidian army. As I say, mine's mostly a skirmishing light troop army. Uh, thus, if you look at the front, I've got foot troops there that have got two models per base. And these are your silo, these are your skirmishing troops, very effective um, in 
dense terrain, uh, move quicker than other troops as well. Behind them, with the uh, four men to a base, they're my auxilia. Auxilia represent light troops. They don't suffer any problems fighting in um, bad going, you know, difficult terrain, woods and rocky outcrops, that kind of thing. Uh, downside is they don't have the standing power of things like blade. So the combat factor of my auxilia against infantry would be three. Combat factor of blade is a five. So, you know, they're very unlikely to break um, blade, so you have to rely on using terrain to your advantage. My horseman at the back, which has uh, two uh, light, uh, two horsemen to the base, they're called light horse. Uh, these are quick, nimble, not got a high combat factor, like two. Uh, so they're not going to win many fights, but what you use these guys for is to run behind enemy units, engage in the flanks. I mean, if your flanks engage and your front's engage and you lose a combat, you're dead. So, yeah, they're, they're there for speed. Um, the elephant is my, probably my bulk in my army. As long as I don't get engage any enemy light troops, which can kill elephants really easily, they have a good combat factor. I think the combat factor five against infantry. So, you know, the, he can really plow through infantry. And as you can see, I've, I've got auxiliary there to support him. And unusually, also my commander, which could have been a cavalry, uh, but I went for him to be light horse, just so I can move him around and uh, be nice and irritating as Numidian should be. And finally, in the background there, you'll just see a small camp. I mean, that's all it is, as long as it's going to hold a base of infantry. Um, so you want something that will hold probably a 30 mil deep base max. And um, yeah, and that, that if that's taken, it counts towards extra element losses. So battles are fought um, until you lose four bases. Um, so that's quite scary because it doesn't take a lot uh, to destroy an army. Which I'm just going to check that out. I'm, I'm thinking it might be. I'm pretty sure it's four bases um, because I'm used to playing Kings of War. Let's have a quick look. Um, uh, it is first to enter. But yep, uh, four bases lost. Uh, side side chariots, which are kind of like a thrower unit, don't count. Uh, I think horde don't count, and your camp followers don't count towards it. Uh, loss of your general counts as two elements, and the loss of your camp counts as two elements. So as you can see, you lose a third of your army, the game's over. So these games are very quick, played on a small area, and um, yeah, it's a fantastic little game. And I hope to get some battle reports up for this, and so just so you can see how you do it. As I said, I'm going to do uh, a series called Get Starting With, and in this case it's going to be DBA. And I'm basically just going to go through uh, what I've brought and how much it costs. I'm going to go and uh, buy a Carthaginian army and put it together, paint it, and kind of document it on the way. Uh, so you can see what kind of investment is into this game. Uh, one of the problems with this game is you could, you could spend a little, like one army, like this, um, probably about 30 quid. Or you could spend a lot, in my case, which is like, have just so many armies. I mean, the game's so easy to put together, the armies are so easy to paint, and it's fun to play. Um, you end up doing sections of periods. So, I, I mean, I've covered pretty well the Punic Wars. I have a Carthaginian, Numidian, um, uh, Gallic, uh, Ancient Spanish army. Um, but I'm looking through it, and I think, you know, I'd love to do the Pharaohs, uh, do a Hittite army, uh, Kushite army, um, Egyptian army, and just go from there. You just pick like a period, and then do one army, and then you can do another one. Um, the other thing which does is really missing from this book is the campaign system. Apparently, there is um, a, like a companion book. Um, I think it's written by Sue Laughlin Barker, and it I think I believe the campaign is in that, but I've not got a copy of that yet. Um, the campaign is very basic. Um, it's it's a node based campaign, but the games are very quick, um, very deadly. Uh, once you've lost stuff, you've lost stuff. Uh, but they're great fun. You can play them in a day. Um, over Christmas, we had our last day of gaming, and uh, we did a DBA campaign, and we did it in the Punic Wars period. Uh, we had six players, I believe. Uh, we had Syracuse, Numidia, Carthage, Rome. Um, uh, uh, what they called the P Persians of the time, Seleucid, Ptolemaic Egypt, and in that in six hours we actually played uh, like a three-year campaign, 
and it came to a good end and everyone was happy we all played games i mean the games would say it lasts between half an hour 40 minutes so you don't have to worry about how long it takes when people have to sit and watch and some of them are even quicker and you can have some really great fun surprising results i mean i pushed myself against rome for a long while and um then Rome counterattacked with the help of his Seleucid ally, and I was in quite a dire situation. Um, but I ended up fighting him on the field. I had five bases. I think I had one auxilia, uh, one elephant, my light horse commander, and uh, two siloi. And he had his full Roman army, who had um, nicely been equipping themselves. So he had twelve elements, and his allies also sent a contingent of three. Uh, uh, elements as well so I was up against 15 and lo and behold uh, I managed to use the rough ground to hide all my silo in and sniped off at his um, commander and chased down a couple of other units and I actually managed to get a victory uh, outnumbered three to one so you know it can happen it's all about setting up your table uh, the terrain uh, that's to say what was one thing I'm going to do with the get starting with I'm going to look at the terrain size of the terrain and how to make some basic terrain for the troops uh, especially with the Carthaginians, which I'll be doing this with, uh, they're called classed as literal, which means they live on the you know sea and uh, as they are uh, mainly merchants anyway. Uh, so I have to have a sea edge on my board, which also adds more tactical interest too, because you can also bring troops in via the sea edge to try and get behind enemy troops. So this is a game for it's got twelve pages of rules, is so deep and it's such great fun to play, and. Uh, a day campaign I you know you can't really complain about it too much so now I'll just leave and uh, end up with what I'm gonna score this out of 10 okay so the final score what am I gonna give it well the book isn't um, overly enthralling I mean it's pages and pages of writing no pictures no nothing to get your juices flowing on that side of it but what there is is concise detailed information and it's fantastic information I mean the rules themselves of the game as, as difficult as it is to learn once you've learned it it's an easy game to play and describing how to play but it's hard to master I mean you do get a nice competitive feel of it you do get the feel of the armies of the time just how terrain affects them how formations are made up a brilliant book and four and a half thousands or four and a half thousand years of history and armies that have been researched as hard as they can be makes this 20 pound book absolutely fantastic uh, the only thing this book was missing i think was the uh, dba rules and um that, that the, the dba rules the dba campaign rules which i think were brilliant from the other additional editions of the books including hordes of things i mean we've played so many of those and i say you can play them in a day a campaign in a day can't beat that so a small area small number of miniatures to get involved but can fantastic rule sets uh this i'm going to give a uh, eight out of five uh, eight out of five eight and a half out of ten so that's what i score and i think it's probably going to be the highest score for a long while because this game is in my opinion fantastic uh what I don't give it the max score because um, it's not perfect um, for some you know some people find I can understand why some people find issues with this game uh, look of it for the start it's quite small scale it doesn't have that army feeling look obviously this upgrades you can do big battle DBA where you move, use um, multiples of the 12 so you can have 24 uh, 36 48 um, units and makes the game a bit bigger a uh, bit more interesting to do larger battles with also the basing system itself is used in the other dbx systems dbm dbmm so I, I haven't played those um, i have done field of glory and again the basing system is similar enough if not exactly the same as uh, field of glory uh, which i have played and enjoyed and um, so it might be something i'll be building up to again because i haven't played it in a long while so i hope this was useful to you and I'll see you next time. Farewellus. Hey guys, so it's uh, giveaway time. And um, what have I got to give away? And how you can win it? Uh, right, first of all, this will be given away on the 40th Saga Battle Board. Um, I've changed how I'm originally going to do it. And that's what I'm going for now. I'll type in the comment section, Hail. And the first, say, 20 people to reply, Ragnar, uh, will be put into a draw. I'll roll a, a d20 and uh, someone will randomly win. 
And what I've got to offer here is from Griffin Beast. Uh, many thanks to them. We have the Saga rulebook, along with the four battle boards included, which is the Welsh, Norman, Viking, and Anglo Danish. And also two lots of dice. We have the Crusader dice there and the Viking dice as well. And on top of that I've also chucked in four Berserkers that I've painted up as well. So I uh, hope this of use to you and I hope you're up for that. So I'll see you on the 40th episode. As always guys, many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Farewell.